George St. Pierre is one of the most polarizing fighters to ever grace the UFC. The two division champion was a complete fighter both inside and outside the octagon. But to my surprise, many people hadn't followed or didn't even know about GSP until his title fight against Michael Bisping back in 2017. And as great as he looked in that fight, his welterweight title reign was absolutely spectacular and deserves to be spoken about. Hey guys, it's Keon and today I want to talk about George St. Pierre. As a young Canadian, George St. Pierre was my absolute idol when I was growing up. Up. and I definitely have to credit him for being the reason I fell in love with the sport. GSP began his career in Quebec, Canada. He quickly built a 5-0 record and finished almost all of his opponents in the first round. In 2004, he got the call to fight in the UFC where he quickly defeated Caro Parisian and Jay Heron. This set him up to fight for the vacant welterweight belt against Matt Hughes. There was a lot of hype behind GSP in this fight, but he had big competition in Matt Hughes who established himself as a welterweight great at this point. The first round was competitive with GSP landing a spinning back kick to the ribs of Matt Hughes, but eventually Matt Hughes brought the fight to the ground and submitted GSP with one second left in the round. GSP admitted after the fight that he already felt like he lost before stepping inside the octagon as Matt Hughes was his idol and he didn't believe he could beat him. After the fight, GSP went on a four fight win streak before fighting BJ Penn at UFC 58 in a fight that would determine the number one welterweight contender. The fight was a very close contest with both fighters landing significant strikes. GSP also used his wrestling to control BJ on the floor. At the end GSP won the split decision but many argued that BJ won the fight. GSP was a bloody mess as per Joe Rogan and BJ had almost no visible injuries. This win set up a title fight for GSP against his former foe, Matt Hughes. The difference from the first fight to the second one was that GSP was absolutely dominant. After almost finishing Hughes in the first round with a Superman punch, GSP continued to outwork Hughes in the second, eventually finishing him off with a head kick and strikes. George St. Pierre not only beat his idol that night, but he also captured the welterweight championship. And I think many believed he would hold onto that belt for a very long time. But then UFC 69 happened. In his first title defense, he was set to fight Ultimate Fighter winner Matt Serra. Matt Serra was an 11 to 1 underdog. Many believed GSP would steamroll through his opponent, but what ended up happening shocked the world. World. Matt Serra went on to defeat GSP in the first round by TKO, thus losing the belt before even one title defense. GSP after the fight said he had a lot of personal issues which included the death of a cousin and his father's illness. He later on went to say that he shouldn't have made excuses and should have just admitted that Matt Serra was the better man that night. After losing the belt, GSP went on to fight NCAA wrestling champion Josh Koscheck. Many believe Koscheck's ground game would be too much for GSP, but GSP outwrestled Koscheck and maintained top position to earn the unanimous decision win. A third fight between GSP and Matt Hughes was booked for the interim belt at UFC 79. GSP outwrestled Matt Hughes and stopped all of his takedowns. He then went on to lock a Kamara on Hughes which ultimately transitioned into an armbar. Hughes would end up verbally submitting and GSP would go on to become the interim champion. This set up a rematch against Matt Serra who captured the belt from GSP one year earlier. UFC 83 was on April 19th, 2008 in Montreal, Quebec. It was the first UFC event in Montreal and the first time GSP fought in Montreal since 2003. The fight was a one-sided GSP affair. Seconds into the first round, GSP took down Matt Serra and worked his ground and pound on the champ. This ground and pound attack led into the second round where GSP got Serra into a turtle position. He began landing vicious knees to the body of Serra and without properly defending GSP's attacks, the ref called off the fight. GSP regained his title and did it in absolute dominant fashion. For his first title defense at UFC 87, GSP was set to fight former Purdue wrestling captain John Fitch. At this point, Fitch was on a 16 fight win streak, using his wrestling to neutralize all of his opponents. But in this fight, GSP out wrestled and outstruck John Fitch to a clear unanimous decision, with all judges giving St. Pierre multiple 10-8 rounds. GSP was then booked to defend the belt against BJ Penn in a highly anticipated rematch at UFC 94. At the time, BJ Penn was the UFC lightweight champion. This marked the first champion vs champion bout in the UFC. BJ was undefeated at lightweight and captured the welterweight belt back in 2004. The fight was very even on paper, especially since the first fight could have gone either way. The first round was very even, with both fighters landing with strikes and BJ denying all of GSP's takedowns. But after the first round, it was all GSP from there. 
He began to take BJ down at his will, working top position and landing with ground and pound. During the end of the fourth round, BJ's corner stopped the fight. Afterward, BJ stated that he was out on his feet during the third and fourth round, saying, I was probably borderline knocked out or something. The win came with some controversy after one of GSP's corner men rubbed petroleum jelly around his body. BJ Penn even stated that GSP felt slippery during the fight. Dana White would go on to say that he did believe GSP was greased, but it wasn't in the intent to cheat. After this controversy, MMA fighters were banned from having petroleum jelly rubbed on their bodies. At this point in his career, GSP was considered the pound for pound best fighter in MMA. He wasn't just beating his opponents, he was destroying each and every one of them. His next challenge was on the UFC's biggest card, UFC 100, against Brazilian striker Thiago Alves. Alves was coming off of a huge knockout win against Matt Hughes and many thought he would be the man to derail GSP. But once again, GSP dominated. He wrestled Alves and maintained the pace throughout 5 rounds, winning a lopsided decision. At UFC 111, GSP went on to fight British fighter Dan Hardy. He dominated Dan Hardy in the stand-up and on the ground. During the fight, GSP had Hardy in a tight armbar, but Hardy wouldn't tap. Later on, he had Hardy in a tight Kimura, but Hardy was able to withstand and escape. GSP went on to win the fight by unanimous decision, but many fans were not impressed with GSP not finishing the fight. As great as GSP was at this point, he was receiving backlash from MMA fans who complained that he never finishes his fights. This became a reoccurring theme in GSP's career after the Hardy fight. GSP went on to coach the Ultimate Fighter against Josh Koscheck. The show built a lot of tension between both fighters prior to their match at UFC 124. GSP kept the fight standing for 5 rounds with Koscheck. He effectively used his jab to pick apart Koscheck. By the end of the fight, Koscheck's eye was completely swollen shut from all the damage. This fight was extra fulfilling for GSP fans because many of them hated Koscheck, especially after the season of The Ultimate Fighter. At this point in his career, GSP started receiving media attention outside of the MMA world. His popularity definitely helped MMA get more into the mainstream market. People loved GSP, not only because he was the best fighter, but because he was such a humble and respectful person. Throughout his career, he rarely engaged in trash talk, pointing out that he wouldn't be good at it since his English wasn't too good, so he made up for it with dominant performances. GSP was booked to face jiu-jitsu fighter Jake Shields. Jake Shields was on a 15-fight win streak and many people believed he was going to be a tough test for GSP. The fight was the main event for UFC 129, the first ever card in Toronto. The attendance was record-breaking with over 55,000 people coming to this event. The previous largest attendance was at UFC 124 at just over 23,000 people. And that event was also headlined by GSP. Speaking more numbers, GSP did huge pay-per-view numbers. All of his fights after 2008 did over over 600,000 purchases. At this time, that was huge. Even now, that's huge. There are current champions who can't even do 500,000 buys. GSP's fight with Jake Shields turned out to be lackluster, with the two staying on their feet for the most part and GSP stopping Jake Shields from bringing it to the floor. GSP went on to win the decision, but it was his first fight since the first Matt Serra fight where he lost a round. After the fight, GSP suffered an ACL injury that forced him out of fighting for over a year. This would be the longest layoff in GSP's career, and with the circumstances of his ACL injury, many people believed he wouldn't come back to be the same fighter that he was. And during this time, the welterweight division was growing with many top contenders. It seemed like GSP's days as a champion were numbered, especially for his next fight against interim champion Carlos Condit. I've spoken about Carlos Condit in other videos before, but I've never spoken about him during this time in his career, where he was at his absolute prime. He just came off a win against Nick Diaz to claim the interim championship, and prior to that, he was on a tear in the welterweight division. He was knocking his opponents out left and right. He also had great cardio and was very durable. This posed as a huge threat to GSP who was booked to fight him at UFC 154. The fight was dominant for GSP from the start, working his jab and bringing down Carlos Condit at his will. At one point in the fight, Carlos threw a head kick and had GSP in huge trouble. I remember watching this and I got so nervous, but somehow GSP recovered and continued to dominate the fight after. The fight was very entertaining and that was a huge bounce back for GSP. Soon after, GSP was booked to fight Nick Diaz at UFC 158. Diaz known for his conditioning and boxing was neutralized when GSP took Diaz down at will and maintained top control. GSP won the clear unanimous decision, but once again he was receiving backlash for not being able to finish the fight. At this point, GSP's last finish was 4 years ago against BJ Penn. Even that wasn't an actual finish by GSP since BJ's corner stopped the fight. So going even further back, his last finish was his third fight with Matt Hughes back in 2007. GSP was then booked to fight wrestler Johnny Hendricks. 
Johnny was clearing out the welterweight division not only with his superb wrestling but also with his knockout power. I have to admit, I was really nervous for GSP in this fight. GSP hasn't been known for having the strongest chin and Johnny Hendricks is known to connect with only one shot. And since Hendricks also had a developed ground game, I began thinking how George could win this fight. The first round was competitive with GSP bringing down Hendricks seconds into the fight. But Hendricks also landed a takedown of his own. In the second round, Hendricks landed an uppercut on GSP's chin, having him hurt but still able to stay in the fight. GSP comes back in the third by showcasing his elite striking and overall controlling the pace. Then I would say Hendricks took the fourth round by taking the champ to the ground and working his ground and pound. At this point, GSP was a bloody mess and Hendricks looked fresh. Another thing I wanted to add with GSP is that whenever he did take damage from his opponents, it would visibly show. He was very prone to getting bruised and cut easily, even even if it was just a small attack. This is a little side note that I'll get back to at the end of the fight. In the final round, GSP was the aggressor by throwing a nice body kick and working on a single. GSP also landed a strike that wobbled Hendricks, but Hendricks followed up with a takedown. When the fight got back to the feet, GSP got a takedown of his own and worked the Kimura till the end of the round. Personally, I gave this round to GSP, but it was very close. Ultimately, George got the split decision win, but not without controversy. Dana White thought Hendricks was robbed of the decision. Hendricks went on to say that he thought he beat GSP because GSP looked badly beaten and Johnny was unscathed. Back to my point about GSP getting bruised and cut easily. As much as GSP looked badly beaten up, the fight will tell you otherwise. It was 2-2 going into the 5th round and GSP's octagon control gave him that last round in my opinion. Regardless, at the end of the fight when he was giving his post-fight interview, George told the crowd that he would step away from fighting for a bit. As happy as I was that he won the decision, I was very sad that he would not be fighting for the foreseeable future. The next month, GSP vacated his welterweight belt. This was a belt that he defended 9 times and held for 5 years. It was the end of a reign for a welterweight king. To be honest, after this, I didn't think GSP would come back at all. And I really didn't think he would have to. He proved all he had to prove and cemented himself as one of the best in the sport. But then 4 years later, GSP announced that he was coming back. But he wasn't just coming back to welterweight, but to middleweight to challenge the champion, Michael Bisping. The fight was held at UFC 217 at Madison Square Garden. Watching GSP fight in 2017 was a surreal experience. When he began walking out of the cage, my nerves increased and it gave me that nostalgic feeling that I used to have whenever GSP would walk out for his fights. I felt especially nervous for this fight because the last time we saw GSP fight was 4 years prior. What if he wasn't the same fighter? What if Ring Rust caught up with him and he wouldn't be able to handle the spotlight on the biggest card of the year? I was very opposed to this fight from the beginning because I didn't think GSP had anything left to prove. If he lost this fight, he would essentially ruin his legacy. But after two competitive rounds, GSP landed a jab on Bisping that hurt him badly. At this point, I was up from my seat and I was screaming. He went on to take Bisping's back where he choked the champion unconscious, making it his first finish in 10 years. In 2017, George St. Pierre became the middleweight champion and only the fourth man in the company's history to become a champion in multiple divisions. 34 days after, GSP did vacate the belt due to his colitis, but it was a respected decision by the champ as he didn't want to hold up the division like some fighters. So this was basically everything you have to know about GSP. So let's answer the question. How good was GSP? He wasn't good. He was phenomenal. He is a two-time welterweight and one-time middleweight champion. He defended his welterweight belt nine times in a division that was filled with elite fighters. And not only did he beat his opponents, but for the most part, he did it in a very dominant fashion. Even when he did lose, he avenged his losses very decisively. Yes, he wasn't known as a finisher, but I was very impressed with how he can take fights to five rounds and basically win every round, with some rounds being 10-8 rounds. GSP was one of the first true all-around fighters in the UFC. His striking was amazing to watch Watch, and even though he wasn't a college wrestler, he became one of the best wrestlers in the UFC and went on to defeat actual NCAA wrestlers. Most importantly, GSP had a very high fight IQ. He knew his opponent's strengths and worked against them. Outside of the octagon, he was a very classy and respectful person. He didn't need trash talk to hype up a fight because he sold himself as who he was. MMA in Canada is huge because of GSP and this sparked an increase of MMA talent from the country. Aside from Canada, the entire world took notice to MMA because of GSP. He's the reason MMA began to be seen as an actual competitive sport than just a sideshow. In a time where fighters were talented in some aspects of MMA, GSP was talented in all of them. This all-around talent was the reason he was seen as an athlete than just a fighter. He would do different methods of training like gymnastics to improve himself as an athlete. Today's fighters train the same way and that's because of GSP. So when I look back at GSP's career and all that he has done for the sport of mixed martial arts, I would have to put him at the top as the greatest of all time. 
My name is Keon and this was my take on how good GSP actually was. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put it in the comments down below because I would love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because that will help me so much. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell right over here. So whenever I do release a video, you'll be the first to know about it. That's all I have for now. I'll see you in my next one.